Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I am a consultant cardiologist in York. And over the past few months, I've been doing some videos on generally lifestyle. And um, uh, today I thought I'd do a little video on the subject of smoking. And this was partly because one of my friends um, who'd seen me on YouTube, Stefano, asked me if, he, if I could do a video on smoking. And, um, uh, and we all know that smoking is a bad thing. Uh, we all know it's bad for the heart, but I thought I'd just try and give you some figures um, about exactly how bad it is and how it goes about harming us. Okay, so the first thing to say is that about 80%, 80% of all heart disease is caused by lifestyle. Okay, a bad lifestyle or uh, modifiable factors within our lifestyle contribute to 80% of all heart disease. Okay, and these include an unhealthy diet, physical inactivity, and harmful use of alcohol. But by far, the leading cause is smoking. Okay, and 14% of all deaths from heart and circulatory diseases are caused by smoking. And compared to non smokers, almost um, uh, smokers have almost a four times increased risk of heart attack and stroke. And actually, if you stop smoking, within two years, your risk goes down quite substantially. <coughs> Sorry. So the question is, how, how does smoking affect us so badly? Why does it, what does it do? Okay. Well, the first thing to say is that the minute you start smoking, as soon as you start inhaling tobacco, uh, the first thing that happens is that within a minute, the heart rate begins to rise. And this is because of uh, the nicotine within the cigarette, the addictive substance in the cigarette. And the nicotine stimulates the body to produce adrenaline. The adrenaline makes the heart beat faster and the adrenaline also increases the blood pressure. Now the problem with that is that now the heart is beating faster and the blood pressure is higher. And you can imagine, uh, <clears throat> it's a bit like if you have a pipe, uh, uh, a hose pipe, and what you're basically doing is you're suddenly uh, increasing the tap, uh, the pressure generated by the water. And that, and basically what that is doing is it's causing a lot of um, uh, damage to the actual pipe because you're increasing the amount of water that's going through very suddenly. The pressure in the pipe is going up and the heart therefore has to work much harder, okay? Because the pressure is so much higher the heart has to work much harder to try and keep the blood going around. And similar changes occur because the heart is having to work harder, it struggles to supply blood to all the organs as easily as it used to. And that really results in uh, various important organs such as the kidneys also um, getting uh, less blood. Not only do they get less blood, um, but um, they, the increased pressure with which um, the increased pressure that the adrenaline has caused can cause changes within the walls of the kidneys and the liver and every other organ in the body. Anything which has a blood supply will be affected. Uh, now, the second thing that it happens is that um, with carbon dioxide, um, sorry, not with carbon dioxide, the smoking contains carbon monoxide, okay? So it increases the exposure to carbon monoxide. And carbon monoxide will bind to your hemoglobin, which is the main cell in your blood, the main compound in the blood that carries the oxygen around. So what happens is the carbon monoxide binds to the hemoglobin, and therefore oxygen, which you're inhaling, can't bind to the hemoglobin. And therefore, less oxygen can be transported around the body because the carbox, carbon monoxide is bound to the hemoglobin. So not only are you now increasing the requirements of the heart, you are asking the heart to work much harder, but you've also got less oxygen going around. Uh, and as a result, the tissues start getting starved of oxygenated blood. And if you, if you continue that for a while, some tissues will undoubtedly start suffocating and um, some of the cells in those tissues will start dying. 
So then another effect it has is that it affects the body's cholesterol levels, okay? So we have good cholesterol and we have bad cholesterol. And the effect of smoking is that it actually increases the amount of bad cholesterol and reduces the amount of good cholesterol. And the problem with bad cholesterol is that if you have a lot of bad cholesterol, it's, it sticks to the walls of the blood vessels, okay? So it sticks to the walls of all blood vessels and therefore causes the blood vessels to narrow. Now, the effect of that is that now you're having to push against a narrow west vessel. So you're putting more stress on the heart, which is going to have to try and get blood through narrowed vessels. And this clogging up of the blood vessels is called atherosclerosis, which people talk about. And it's basically furring up of the arteries, not only in your heart, but also in the brain, in the neck, in the kidneys, in the stomach, in the legs, everywhere. Uh, you can start developing this furring up. Now, the problem with the furring up is that um, <clears throat> the furring up is, it's, it's a bit like having a crust after you've sustained a wound, you know, so it's, it's fragile, it's, um, it's easily damaged, uh, and <clears throat> it's not stable. So what tends to happen is most people think, okay, well, I'm clogging my arteries up, I'm you know, I've smoked, I've, I'm clogging my arteries up, I'll, I'll give up after several years because it's unlikely that I'll have done as much damage by that time. So most people, particularly when you're young, you think, okay, um, you know, I'm, I'm only young at the moment, I'll smoke and then I'll give up when I get to my 30s and um, that should be okay because if, I, you know, because they think that the clogging up is a small, insignificant thing, which may build up over a number of years, but doesn't really impact on them straight away. There are two things about this. The first thing is that your risk depends on when you started smoking. Okay, so if you start smoking at a younger age, you have a higher risk than if you start smoking later on in life. Uh, the second thing to say is that, yes, of course, the arteries can clog up, and as they continue to clog up over time, um, you will find that uh, the vital organs that they supply get more and more affected. However, there is a much bigger risk, and the other big risk is that, well, there are two big risks. One, that smoking causes your platelets and your blood to become thicker, so it is more likely to clot. And the second thing is that smoking induces an inflammatory effect on the body. So what you're basically doing is, let's say you've smoked over a number of years, you've formed a crust, and then every time you take a hit, you're really, it's like rubbing a little toothbrush on that crust. What that means is that then causes a little bit of bleeding. And as soon as you get bleeding, uh, you form a blood clot. And that blood clot can then block the artery instantly. So it's not just about the fact that you are slowly causing clogging up of the arteries. It's also about the fact that you are exposing these areas, these vulnerable areas, to the risk of sudden clots forming, which will block the arteries. And that is why the best thing is never to try and get to that stage where you are beginning to cause any kind of damage to your arteries because when you damage your arteries you're always going to be more prone to causing clots to form as a result of damage to those arteries and um, this is why you, you see that when you have people with heart disease they they form in two groups you will often hear of people saying oh well I've been walking, I've been getting some chest pains, I went to my doctor, the doctor said, oh, you've got heart disease. And then he said, oh my God, you've got, all your blood vessels are narrowed, you need an emergency bypass. I had a bypass and that saved my life and I feel great, okay? Truth is, that bypass hasn't saved his life, okay? Uh, the bypass has made him feel better. He was always going to do reasonably well because he was getting a warning. He was getting a warning that the blood wasn't getting through, so he was getting symptoms. He goes to the um, doctor. The doctor finds areas which are very significantly narrowed, and they perform a bypass, and they bypass the very narrowed bits. However, that doesn't mean that the rest of the vessel is normal. The rest of the blood vessels still have 
areas are furring up. They just don't look so bad that they need to be bypassed. And the problem is that if you still have areas which are furred up, even though you may have a bypass operation, you could still develop clot in the bits which haven't been bypassed. And if you do, then that would still cause a heart attack. So that's really important to note that the bypass or stent is not a cure. It is just masking the problem that has been sustained from a bad lifestyle from a, a relatively early age. The second thing to say is that um, uh, <clears throat> um, because you're um, the second thing to say is that there is another group of patient. Okay, you will often have heard or you will know someone who was completely well, and then suddenly you hear the news, oh, he dropped down dead. Their doctors say it's a heart attack. Well, this is exactly the kind of patient that we are all worried about because the first kind of patient gets a warning. He goes into hospital, he gets his bypass. The bypass hasn't saved his life. It's making him feel better, but he's happy because he's been picked up as having, his, he feels that his problem has been sorted. The second patient is the patient who has got some furring up, but the furring up is not so narrow that it causes him any symptoms. But what does tend to happen is that even if there is a small little area of furring up or plaque, um, smoking will cause this inflammatory hit. Uh, that area of plaque can suddenly uh, break off. And where it breaks off, there's a little bit of bleeding and the, and the body thinks, oh, I've sustained a wound and suddenly forms a blood clot. And it forms a blood clot very easily because the blood is much thicker as a result of the smoking. And so the blood clot forms, that blocks off the artery altogether, even though it's designed to try and fill the area which was damaged, it actually fill, it blocks the whole artery as a byproduct. And that causes a sudden heart attack. And that, that, that is the most dangerous kind of heart attack. Uh, because it happens suddenly, it happens without warning, and you really have to be lucky to survive those. Um, <clears throat> so those are the mechanisms by which smoking affect the, affects the heart. Um, it would be true to say that um, women tend to be more prone to the risks of smoking than men. It, um, it's also true to say that it would be right to say that, look, um, you know, a cigarette smoker is at least twice as likely or probably even four times as likely to have a heart attack as a non-smoker. However, in people who are younger than 50 years, the risk is as high as five-fold compared to a non-smoker, okay? And if you, for those who have a heart attack, the risk is highest in active smokers, less so in ex-smokers, and much less in non-smokers, okay? Um, and <clears throat> even light smokers, so even you, if you smoke three to five cigarettes a day, you are still at a significantly higher risk of developing heart disease, okay? And I strongly, strongly urge you not to wait until you develop symptoms of heart disease, but to realize at a very early stage that if you start, develop, if you start causing these changes in your blood vessels, um, then you will never get better from them. You will damage your blood vessels and you will always be prone to having problems. Uh, and you are, will always be slightly higher at risk of having heart attack. Even if you've stopped smoking for 20 years, you will still be in a slightly higher risk group compared to someone who has not smoked. So again, I urge you to rethink uh, if you smoke and the, the best time to cut down, the best time to stop is now uh, because 10 years down the line, you may be faced with someone saying, your heart arteries are blocked. And yeah, sure, we can bypass it, but that's not gonna save your life um, because you've got disease everywhere. So I hope this was helpful. Stefano, this is for you. Um, and um, if you want to get in touch with me, please feel free to do so via my website, which is here. Yeah, uh, you can ring my secretary, Jeanette, if you want to talk to me. I have a Twitter account and a Facebook account. Um, so I hope this was useful. Thanks for listening and good night.